Hey everyone, Vincenzo Calla here. Welcome to episode 25 of Let's Discuss Politics. Today, I'm glad to be joined by the MP for Perry Sound Muskoka, Scott Aitchison. Scott was first elected to the House of Commons in the 2019 election and was re-elected in 2021. Prior to this election, Scott was a member of Huntsville Town Council, being first elected at the age of 21. After serving as town councillor, district councillor, and deputy mayor, he was elected as mayor of Huntsville in 2014. In the 2022 Conservative leadership race, Scott ran and was one of the six candidates on the final ballot. Scott currently serves as the Conservative Shadow Minister for Housing and Diversity and Inclusion. So thanks again, Scott, for joining me. Thank you. So let's start off with our first segment, which is called Scott's Story, where we'll talk about Scott's political history. So Scott, I know you've been a little busy this year, so I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about. So um, first off, let's start off by right from the beginning. When did you first get involved in politics? Uh, well, I, yeah, I guess I first got involved in student politics in, in school, right, in high school. Um, I was the, uh, back then they still called it the student council president. They have a parliamentary system now, Huntsville High School. But I was the student council president. Um, uh, I was, a, I think I was a grade rep before that. And, uh, but then of course, uh, uh, went off to university and uh, I took a year off of university thinking that I would save some money. I've always been a conservative and a little bit worried about debt. Uh, and so I thought, well, I'll, I'll save some money and take a year off of school. And then of course the municipal election was on. Um, and I, you know, I was interested enough to be, you know, helping other candidates and meeting folks. And uh, a former mayor uh, and uh, principal of the high school, a, a mentor of mine, um, encouraged me to run. And I said, "Well, I have to go back to school. I don't have three years." And he said, "Ah, you're not going to win. You got to get your name out there. So you should go and do your thing. Don't spend any money. Just go talk because you're a good talker and get your name out there. And then and you'll lose. And then you can go back to school. And you can come back, and everyone will know who you are. And then you'll win the second time around." Well, I, I, I thought, well, I'll do it, I guess. I mean, I'll just, you know, I'll do it. And then I won by the skin of my teeth. I, uh, I, I, I beat a long time incumbent, lovely guy. John Earl was his name, but I beat him by, I think, 32 votes. Uh, and so it was a major shift in our council. And then it changed kind of the trajectory of my life quite a bit. So, so I got involved in high school and, uh, and it, became, uh, it became very real when I got elected to council at 21. So there you go. So you had been in municipal politics for a while. You were councillor and then you went on to become the mayor. So eventually, why did you decide in 2019 to take the step into federal politics? Like why federal politics? Why did you decide to run for MP and why in 2019? Uh, well, so I remember a parliament in Perry South Muskoka was Tony Clement. And uh, I had literally just won re-election as mayor. Uh, I was loving being the mayor. I still describe it as the best job I've ever had. Um, uh, but I, I, you know, Tony Clement, um, uh, you know, I, I had announced he wasn't, he wasn't going to run again. Uh, and I didn't, no one was really expecting that. I had sort of, I maybe dreamt of being an MP when I was younger, but I'd really kind of given up on that just because we know he, in Perry, South Muskoka, we tend to keep our MPs around for 15 or 20 years. And I was loving being the mayor. And so, um, I, so I thought long and hard about it because I, I was receiving a lot of calls from mentors and, and people that I respect saying, you should, you should run. And I said, well, you know, I don't know. Um, but I'll tell you, though, one of the biggest issues we were trying to tackle as a Huntsville council at the time was housing. Um, Muskoka is, I think, well known, uh, particularly in Ontario circles, as a kind of a, you know, it's cottage country. A lot of very wealthy people have, uh, you know, pretty stunning vacation homes and I think it's often people see it as a playground of the rich and famous but there's the the, the people who live and work in Muskoka the year-round residents the, the median income is about 20 percent below the provincial average so there's a lot of people working in seasonal work and and uh, service type industries where you know the pay is inconsistent it's not very high um, and and we were we, we had a housing crisis in Huntsville and so we were doing all kinds of things locally um, not the least of which was putting it on the agenda. We didn't really talk much about it before. And so, you know, the municipality was, was in the process of, we would give land to, you know, Habitat for Humanity, for example. We'd done deals with the private sector to build affordable rentals, those kinds of things. But I felt that what we were missing always was a reliable federal partner to help us make some of these projects work. Uh, and so really, you know, for a, there are a lot of reasons to run um, but I think the one that 
that sealed the deal for me was was housing. I was I was I was determined I was going to come to Ottawa and, and do something about the way they don't deliver housing programs. So so I it's uh I I'm I'm I think I, I feel like I'm finally in the role that I was uh, meant to be here for. So before I go on to the next segment, I just wanted to ask you about housing. So when you ran for leader, I know that you made a a point of making housing a priority of yours. How was the response on that? Uh, on I guess the the federal stage in in I guess conservative circles and and those who were sort of looking at the the campaign. How, how was the response to that? Not, uh, the response was very positive. I mean, it didn't hurt that Pierre Pelletier and I had a fairly similar approach on the on the housing file. Uh, I was probably a little more detailed in terms of uh, you know what what holding up you know federal infrastructure dollars for municipalities that aren't getting the job done, what that might look like. Um, but yeah, listen, it's a crisis. We are literally in a housing crisis. There's a there's a continuum of housing, like a spectrum, they call it, right? So, you know, everything from, you know, people who are experiencing homelessness, needing a, like a shelter bed, you know, to supportive and, uh, you know, assisted living uh, residences, uh, rent geared to income, to, you know, affordable rentals, to market rentals, to, you know, um, you know, to first time home buyers and that entire spectrum of housing. Uh, that, I mean, you can go beyond that. Now you're talking about, you know, multiple properties and vacation properties, not a crisis there, but that entire spectrum of housing is in crisis in our country. We need more. I, I mean, it's wrong, but unfortunately we need more shelter beds right now. We need more supportive housing. Uh, and we need more uh, market rentals. We need more affordable rentals. And we just need more supply. And so, uh, you know, in conservative circles, our message was well received because it's well understood that we need more supply. Um, and, and of course, it requires all levels of government to come together. But the municipal, municipal governments in the country are on the front lines of this. And far too often in, in larger cities, particularly, you have, um, you know, politicians, local politicians talking about the importance of housing and needing housing. And then a very reasonable development application will come across the, their desk. Uh, and because, you know, the Planning Act is designed to, you know, give neighbors a say, neighbors will come in and say they don't like it because it's changed. And all of a sudden things get delayed or, or turned down. And so, you know, I, this is, this is you know, we're sort of the beginning of the problem. And of course, you know, it, the provinces have a role to play in this as well. And the federal government, you know, has these funding programs that, you know, community organizations and municipalities can't even get money out of, right? I mean, the, the liberals have promised billions not delivered and the situation is getting worse. Um, and, and so, you know, there's, there's also, you know, federal policy about, you know, our fiscal policy and inflation rates. I mean, inflation is out of control right now. And, and a big part of the reason for that is because of the, the outrageous overspending that this liberal government has done. Um, and now, of course, you're seeing interest rates go up. So the, the whole spectrum is in crisis. It was very well received what we talked about. Um, and, uh, and the conservative, we, we, we actually have solutions that we've been proposing uh, and it's resonating. And I, I, you know, it, it, to me, it's fundamental and foundational to our entire economy. It, it, if, we, if we fix the housing crisis, we fix a lot of other problems as well. So let's talk now about uh, your your role as serving as an elected official, where we'll talk about your experiences and achievements as an elected official. So the first part of this segment is, what's your favorite part about serving Perry Sound Muskoka? Oh, uh, the people. I, so I, I've done this my whole life, as you can imagine. And I, and I you know, I think that uh, I, I describe myself as a, a, as a kind of a raging extrovert. I love being out and about and chatting and, and meeting people. Everybody has a story and, uh, and I'm always I'm always amazed to hear people's story and and to and to get to know people and uh, Perry Sound Muskoka is full of some just amazing people um, stories of resilience and courage and and success. Um, I love the people so. And um, you've been an MP for about three years now. Three years yeah. since 2019. So, what is your favorite achievement so far as an MP? Um, what has been your favorite achievement? Well, I, I guess if I would I would say uh, achievement. It's probably uh, when I was the critic for Labour uh, last fall. Uh, Aaron O'Toole named me the Labour critic, and uh, and in that role, I worked um, 
in a very bipartisan, collaborative way with the Minister of Labor, Seamus O'Regan. Um, they had a piece of legislation uh, they wanted to get passed on um, guaranteeing uh, 10 paid sick days for federally regulated workplaces, which which I pointed out to him at the time was, you know, uh, not the most earth shattering airlines and uh, banks and, and uh, rail lines. Uh, they already have collective agreements that guarantee those kinds of things already. And so, they, I mean, it does affect people. Um, but what I what I asked him to do was to actually take uh, Tom Kamich, the member for Calgary Shepherd. He had a private members bill in the previous parliament that was unanimously supported, um, uh, and and it uh, it failed in the Senate because uh, Justin Trudeau called an election just to try to get a majority. But it was a it was a bereavement a bereavement leave bill for parents who lose a, a child. Um, you know, Tom and his wife had lost a baby girl and um and so he he it was a very personal thing for him to, to put this forward to give parents the time that they need to grieve uh when they lose a child which is a you know it's a it's a horrifying thing and so i thought well you know what let's make this government bill more meaningful and attach tom Kamich's private members bill and uh, and so I just went to Seamus Serena and I said, let's let's see if we can do this. And uh, and he looked at me, he's like, I don't I don't know if we can do that or not, but we should try. And you know, it, there were some uh, late night negotiations and 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 discussions. Uh, it almost fell off the rails, but uh, uh, in in the in the final hours we got it done. And so we got Tom Kamich's uh, bereavement leave bill attached to a piece of government legislation. Um, we got it done unanimously. And the house rose a day early for Christmas, um, and uh, and Tom Kamich um, came to me and he said, uh, he said, you know, what you've done today. <laughs> I said, well, I guess we did some good work. And he said, my staff are still trying to do the research. He said, but we we we're pretty sure that 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 a that a an opposition member's private member's bill has never been attached to a piece of government legislation in the history of this place and passed. And so I'm I'm immensely proud of that work that we did together to get that done, um, to have a, a meaningful impact on the lives of people who uh, who face a horrible circumstance uh, all too often in this country. Let's go into the last segment now, which is called Politics Are All Around Us, where we'll talk about the world of politics around us. So first off, who is or who was another politician that inspires you? Brian Mulroney. Brian Mulroney. And finally, what do you think is, and I know we already talked a bit about this, but um, what do you think is an issue that needs to be focused on more um, going forward? Uh, well, definitely housing. I mean, I, there's, there's a good, there's a focus on it, but I don't think it's, uh, uh, I don't think we're talking about it enough. It, I mean, it's, 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 you know, tent cities are growing in this country. They're not just in Vancouver and Toronto. They're in smaller centers like Charlottetown. I mean, um, you know, I you hear stories over and over again of, 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 you know, seniors that can't afford to heat their home and, uh, you know, and eat real food. I mean, the, the cost of living overall is making this more difficult. But, um, you know, housing, I think housing is, the, is, is really the number one issue in this country. That is all for today. Thank you, Scott, so much for joining me. Thank you, Vincenzo. Well, it was great having you. And if you liked today's interview, make sure to go check out the other part with Scott on Instagram for top 10. If you're watching this interview the day it's coming out, it'll be out on Friday. So to stay updated, make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at BC Productions 25. Check out VincenzoCala.com. Make sure to like, subscribe, and choose to get notifications here on YouTube. Let's Discuss Politics is a VCala production. So until the next video, I'm Vincenzo Cala, signing out.